Hey guys, welcome back to wall.com. So we had a viewer request some uh, stainless in the overhead position. So we're gonna do a little 4F for you today on stainless. I got some eighth inch coupons. Uh, we're gonna use some 16th inch filler metal, 332 tungsten diameter. Bonus, we are reviewing and demoing the new Everlast Lightning MTS 275. Uh, doing a little product review and, and demo for them. Uh, so we figured what better opportunity than to test it out on some thin gauge stainless going overhead. So. Come on in, we'll, uh, we'll go over some of the, the equipment settings and then we'll get set up. All right, so we'll go ahead and dial in our settings. Um, what I like about this machine so far is that all of my parameters are listed right here on the screen. So I don't have to go through different uh, sub menus to view where all my settings are. We'll just go through, I'm gonna run about 140 amps. Now, because I'm using the foot pedal, you know, I'll be able to fluctuate. I probably won't use all 140, but I've got it at my disposal if I need it. We'll just go through here, change the pedal setting. I'm going to be using the uh, the high frequency. Pre-flow, I'm not too worried about. My starting amps, I'm going to drop that to 10. Same thing with my ending amps. That way, I've, you know, I've got a, a nice slow taper in and then a nice slow taper out. Go to the, uh, the foot pedal for 2T, 4T, or a regular foot pedal. I'm just going to run a foot pedal. Pulse, I don't want pulse, uh, but it does have the option. You can go through here and, and change all your pulse settings. Upslope, downslope, because I'm using a foot pedal, I'm not worried about that. Post flow, I'm gonna go ahead and max that out at uh, 10 seconds. And we should be good to go. So that's pretty much everything's listed right here. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, what we got in the torch. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use a uh, water cool number 20 torch. You can go ahead and put a gas lens in there. You can see it's got all these little screens in there. That's just gonna provide me better shielding gas. Uh, it's gonna be a like a column effect of that shielding gas coming out versus real choppy like a uh, standard collet body. Next thing I'm gonna put the collet or the uh, the collet in. It's a 332nd collet. Nothing special about that. Put the back cap on. Now I'm not gonna snug this down all the way because I'm gonna go ahead I've got a number seven cup. 332nd E3 tungsten, but I've sharpened both ends. Okay, I got about a uh, 30 degree angle on there. Just set that right in there for now and then I'm gonna I'll go ahead and finalize uh, my, my stick out once I get it over to the piece. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the grind angle or the Schleifwinkel, if you will. I've got a 30 degree angle on here. That's that's a personal preference of mine. Uh, if you start getting too sharp of a point, you start getting a much wider arc. So that's not what I want. I want to try to keep this in a little bit uh, tighter. I'm doing a, uh, a fillet joint in there, eighth inch material using 1 16th diameter uh, 308 electrode or filler metal. Uh, so I don't want like a really wide puddle in there. I want to keep this very small, keep my uh, heat effective zone very minimal. So that's why I chose that. Like I said, it's personal preference. Now we'll go ahead and I'm going to show you a little trick that I do to set my, uh, my tungsten stick out. Hey Mike, you want to quiet down back there a little bit? Try and shoot a video. Damn, you think we were prepping for a hurricane. All right, so one trick I like to do is uh, I've got a little fillet joint set up here. Uh, obviously I'm going to be doing the overhead version. But we'll put this in the horizontal for a second. I got a 332nd piece of filler metal in there. Now, to help you guys out there, you know, if you uh, if you guys are like myself, certified tungsten dippers, this is going to kind of help you out. I put that 332nd rod in there, and I rest my cup up against the, uh, the the vertical and the horizontal leg of this joint. Put the tungsten tip up against that filler wire, and then lock it in place. That way, when I go through and I'm welding along, my puddle. The crown of my puddle shouldn't be any higher than that 360 or 332nd rod. Uh, so this will help me prevent, uh, you know, running my, the tip of my tungsten into my puddle. All right, so another pro tip, whenever you're dealing with uh, TIG wire filler metal, go ahead and bend a little hook on the back side of it. That's going to do two things for you. Uh, one, it's going to give me an indication when I'm running out of filler metal. You know, if I'm not paying attention to that, it kind of gives me a, a tactile feedback that, hey, you're running out of filler metal, you need to stop, terminate, and get another piece of filler wire. Added bonus, you won't stab any of your co-workers in the eyeball. All right, so I'm just gonna ease with the pedal. Get my puddle established between the two pieces of material first. And then slowly add that filler metal and go down the joint. All right, so I'm gonna use a, a TIG finger. That way I can prop right up against my, my piece of material and, and hold exactly where I want to without getting burnt. You know, it's gonna allow me to stabilize myself, prop up against the, uh, the material. And then with my uh, the filler wire, right, I'm just gonna prop my elbow up against my rib cage and then put one little finger right here on the corner of that plate. That's just gonna keep me kind of stable so I can add that filler metal 
nice and easy in there, keep everything, uh, keep me from wobbling all over the place. Just get a little uncomfortable. Very similar to welding flat. Okay, once I get to the end, remember, I'm going to start tapering off. And then hold right there for that post flow. I don't even want to move, just going to let it sit there. All right, so sometimes you don't have the luxury of being able to brace yourself up against something. You know, you're hanging on a ladder, you got one hand up there, you're 40 foot in the air, whatever the case may be. We're going to go ahead and do this next pass unpropped and just kind of show you guys the difference. Fault. Get the cameraman to quit standing on my gas hose. This might turn out to be a decent weld. I'm not propped up on anything, so I'm just going to kind of rest the cup against the top and bottom plate and just kind of wiggle the cup as I go through, adding the filler metal. Just kind of going nice and easy. I'd tack that and then we'll pause at the end for the post flow. All right, so here's number one, which uh, we we're fully propped up on. Started over here and worked our way down. Pretty good tie-in, nice uniformity, good bead consistency. Pretty much what I was looking for as I went through. We went ahead and wire brushed off any of the additional oxides, the coloring. You don't want that on your stainless steel work, like we've said in previous videos, unless it's for artwork and you know stuff like that. Uh, overall, pretty decent weld. Not my best performance, a uh, little out of practice, but overall, I think I still got it. Uh, next weld. This was the one where we were unpropped. Did pretty good. I just did like a, a more of a wiggling the cup. So still good bead consistency. Uh, not as uniform as I'd like to see it. Like I said, probably need a little bit more practice. But I got a good bead tie-in. Uh, it, it'd be a good structural weld overall. Uh, don't see any problems with it. Other than uh, I told you guys I was a certified tungsten dipper. So we got some uh, evidence of that right there. I stuck pretty good. Um, it's pretty decent performance. I don't think the cameraman caught it on tape, but... Uh, you guys should have been there. It was awesome. All right, so as I stated before, you know, try to prop up, you know, ABCs of welding, always be comfortable. So prop up whenever you can. Sometimes you can't, you know, you just got to make it work. Uh, still, you know, still turns out pretty good. Uh, big shout out to Everlast for sending us this machine. We're still kind of going through some of the paces. We've had it for a couple of weeks. Um, once we get everything dialed in, uh, use all the functions and, and features of it, we're going to go ahead and release a full video. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, make every weld better than your last.